Um, you know, Kevin, Kevin, and I have the Hunter Foundation for the Good of the People, and we recently launched our 8885 uh, Hunter number for those of you caught up in the struggle of addiction. Well, for some time now, and even today and beyond, I have been living in a sober house. When you see me come to work, glammed up, right after the show, I go across the street, I do my Pilates, I told you two hours a day, I like to take care of my body. And you know I've had a struggle with cocaine in my past, and I never went to a place to get the treatment. I don't know how, except God was sitting on my shoulder and I just stopped. But um, there are people in your family, it might be you, who've been struggling. And I wanted to know more of the story. So this is my autobiographical story, and I'm living it. And I'm telling you this. After I go to the Pilates, I go to several meetings all around town in the tri-state area. And I see my brothers and sisters caught up in their addiction and looking for help. They don't know I'm Wendy. They don't care I'm Wendy. There's no autographs. There's no nothing. It's the brothers and sisters caught up in the struggle. And it's been, it's been really interesting, um, this ride. Only Kevin and Kevin have known about this. Uh, not my parents. Nobody. Nobody knew. Because <clears throat> I look so glamorous out here. But after I finish my... After I finish my um, appointments to see my brothers and sisters and, you know, break in bread, I am driven by my 24-hour sober coach back to a home that I live in here in the South, I mean, in the Tri-State, with um, a bunch of smelly boys who've become my family. Um, they hog the TV and watch soccer. And we talk and read and talk and read and then I get bored with them. Doors locked by 10 p.m. Lights out by 10 p.m. So I go to my room and I stare at the ceiling and I fall asleep to wake up to come back here to see you. So that is my truth.